to my channel and welcome to the last video of 2021. Well that, that's just flown by. It, it doesn't seem that it was like this time last year when I was doing my model review. And um, you know, Christmas has just come and gone. Now we're New Year's Eve, nearly into the new year. Um, let's hope that 2022 brings us all good things. So um, I'd just like to thank everybody for supporting me throughout this last year and indeed before that. Um, you know, it's it's great and it, it makes it all worthwhile to do this channel, to do these restorations and put them on YouTube. Um, you know, you get to, well meet, I say meet, not exactly meet, but you get to talk to people, you, you know, um, emails, I've got people, you know, Ian Hulley I've spoken to on the phone a few times. And, um, you know, it's, it's great. You make a lot of new friends. And um, watching other people's channels as well, you know, you learn a lot of things. People say they've learned a lot of me, but most of what I've learned so far, and I've, believe me, I've got a hell of a lot to learn yet, um, I've learned off watching other people, like Corgi Bob, Martin Dare, um, you know, Paul Pimp My Die Costs, another great restorer, he does beautiful paint jobs. There's Juan from Matchbox Resurrection. All these people I've learnt a lot from. And um, there's a hell of a lot more, hell of a lot more people that I haven't mentioned. Um, you know, I can't think off the top of my head, but there's a lot of channels out there with a lot of really good restorers. So we all learn from one another, so it's a great little community. So I'd just like to thank everybody again, um, you know, those that have um, sent donations, oil donations at, um, to my channel for me to restore. Um, those ones that I haven't done yet, they will definitely get done next year. And, um, you know, leading up until my Christmas video, I was doing certain models because I wanted them, as you know now, in my Christmas video so you can see, you know, what I was leading up to. And um, one thing I did in my Christmas video and my son really told me, you know, that I had done it and I hadn't noticed and I feel such a fool now is just before my little video um, with all the models moving. <laughs> I put, it's all happening in Crapoville, and as you're scrolling down, I get to the forecasters for it to clear up, and I spelt forecast wrong, I forgot to put the E in it, and I, I think just because I was really tired when I was doing it, it was late at night, and I'd done my day's work before, and um, you know, I did have a couple of really late nights, or early mornings I should say, getting that video ready, um, and that's no excuse, I should have, I should have, checked it, I should have looked at it, but I just got to the stage where I was like, I've got it done, I've got to save it. And um, it, once it was uploaded, it was too late then, and that's, that's you know, that's when my son noticed it and, and said to me, you spelled that wrong, and I did it. I'm sorry, <laughs> I apologise for that. Right, okay, so um, let's get on with today's video. A review of all the models I've done in 2021 and I think I've remembered them all this year. I did forget some last year. So not a restoration video but just a review and um, I hope you enjoy this video. So please sit back, relax, enjoy watching the video and I can't say see how I got on with this one but see all the models that I got on with throughout the year. Enjoy it. Okay then, I hope the light's alright, um, it's starting to get dark and it's pouring with rain outside and it's really, really, you know, it's got dark suddenly and um, <clears throat> I've put an extra light because the light in here is not very bright but I hope um, you can see alright. So we're going to kick off with this one. Um, I think I've done these in the right order. I've got a list over there. Um, 
So this is the dinky Mercedes Benz 250SE and it's got the working brake lights. Um, I did put a battery in it just before. And uh, I made this box for it. I know I had a bit of trouble with the doing the lines. Um, I wasn't brave enough to scrape scrape the paint off yet. I thought I'd try and do it with the Molotov, but uh, it what well, it didn't turn out that great. But um, the rest of it wasn't too bad. I put these extra spotlights on. They weren't on the actual model. Um, I put that on top of the radiator grill, the little Mercedes emblem. It's just the top of a nail. And I added in behind these two headlights the little indicators. I don't know if you can see in the top. It's just a bit of orange paint behind, but that's how they were on these. Um, made my own number plates. That's where the battery goes underneath, AAA battery. This one's got the working steering. You know, it steers by you way on one side or another to make it turn. And then the working brake lights, like I say. There you go. Just press on the back and on they come. So that's the first one. Came out not too, too bad. Mm. Yeah, so put him back in his box. I won't do it up because I'll have to take the battery out before I put it away again. Okay, next up, I did these two little bubble cars. Double restoration. Cool little, cool little cars. And, um, I kind of did them, that one's upside down, I kind of did them like a, a custom paint job on both of them, I can get them out. So that was the sort of lime green and white, I put jersey number plates on, um, little indicators and the sunroof, I took the, the uh, colour scheme off the internet looking at real ones so that was quite nice that one nice little models I like those the other one here I did a different colour again if I can open the box <laughs> always got trouble opening the box and I don't want to break the flipping thing there we go I can open that one that end ah, that's the right way up this time so there you go this one's a blue and white, um, got a black sunroof and the J number, I said at the time they both registered on the same day, one's J3965 and the other one's J3966, so that was that little double restoration, they had slightly different wheels, obviously from a different um, you know, different year I suppose, I don't know. One's a later one than the other, I expect. So, yeah, they were quite nice little models. They turned out really nice. Uh, better put those back in. Their boxes. Maybe put them this way this time. Boxes again I made from the um, templates I've got. Just shove him back in. There you go. Put those over there. Um, what next? What came next? The Fiat 2300 station wagon. That's a dinky one. So again, I made a box for this. I started to put cuts in there. I know I said I didn't want to do it because I might rip the box on doing it but sometimes the flap doesn't stay shut for very long so um, you know if you've got that cut in it helps to hold it shut 
Now this one, well the bonnet's sort of on a plastic piece there, so it, it's sort of springy up. It's not that great. Um, but it turned out quite well this one. I had a job with the tailgate to fit because it's all plastic bits in the back. And um, it was a bit of a nightmare. They were reproduction parts and it was a bit of a nightmare to get them all to fit properly. It's still not 100%. Well, obviously they wouldn't be if I couldn't get them to fit in the first place. They're not going to have suddenly miraculously fitted themselves in the box. Um, but yeah, I did a bit of extra detailing on that. Again, I googled the the actual car to see. Um, again, that one's got the steering. So, all in all, that wasn't a bad little little uh, car. Oh yeah, the seat, the backrest of the seat. It went up and down, or it goes up and down, I don't know, you probably can't see it in there. Um, you can see it on my video I did of it. But yeah, it's quite a nice little car as well. Okay. Right, what's next? Ah, the dinky shovel dozer. Well, this one came out quite nice. Um, I've got a job to remember I mean, if I had any problems or anything with these. Um, made the stickers on the back. Um, detailing. I had to get reproduction tracks. Um, what did I do? I think I had a donor one of these and um, I took a couple of bits off. I think one of the rams was knackered if I remember. Again that turned out quite nice. And got the tracks so it rolls on the tracks alright. Not alright but it rolls. <laughs> You've got to weigh quite hard to make it work. So again, that was a nice, nice little model. So I like that one, a bit unusual. Okay, what we got next? Ah, the caravan, the dinky four-birth caravan. You know, I made a box for this one. Now she's upside down. There you go. And um, the paint's peeled off the door a bit there, look. Unfortunately, because it's a plastic door and it... That's a shame. Might have to repaint that at some stage, just the door like. Um, other than that, came up alright. Little tow, tow hook. Um, yeah, it wasn't a bad one, that. Did all right. Nice little model caravan to tow behind the, the dinky cars. There's that one. Now. Next we've got the Gorgie Toys, the Hillman Imp in the Monte Carlo trim. Have I got the box the right way? No, upside down. <laughs> so that one came out quite nice. I was pleased with that. Um, that's the one when you push down on the back wheels, the seat back goes up. You push down on the back and then push it forwards, goes up. But um, that's a very nice model. I like that one, it came out nice. Um, I had trouble, I think, with the pillars on this one. 
for the pillars breaking. If I remember rightly. I got a head like a seven, but I don't remember anything now. <laughs> but I remember something with those pillars. I'll have to go back and have a look at the video myself. Did the little lights on the back. The um these ones they got the back that opens the back window. So that all works. Another nice little model. Now, the Corgi Toys Bentley Continental Sports Saloon. That's up next. Again, I made the box for this one. I wrapped him up with tissue paper. Hopefully that hasn't stuck to the paint. <laughs> Just my luck. Eh? Now this was a bit of a custom paint job. Um, it did turn out quite nice. I can't remember if I had to get any replacement parts for this one. I, oh, see, I don't remember. Gotta say, I got head like a sieve. Oh, I had to get the lights. I remember getting the lights. Not too sure about the bumper and all that. Oh, I don't know if that's going to open. It's supposed to open. It did open. There you go. It's got the spare wheel in there. I don't think I had that at the time. I did get that from model supplies afterwards at a later date. That came up quite nice. But one of our wealthy residents. Bought that. Most likely a tax dodger, eh? Not for the likes of me, a car like this, I'm afraid. Out of my league. <laughs> the model one's as close as I get to it, to a real one. Um, again, that's got the steering on. So that was a nice. A nice little model that came out quite nice. I think if you remember, I, the, when I opened the boot, when I just painted it, I chipped it, so I was a bit disappointed about that. But other than that, it's a nice little model. So I want to wrap him back up again. I'll just stop the camera whilst I wrap him up, otherwise you're going to be bored. Okay, that's him all wrapped up. Okay, next we've got this Matchbox Super Kings. It's a Bedford TM from 1977. And this one was kindly donated to my channel by Mr. Peter Horton. And um, I had trouble with these, doing these um, red stripey things on there. Um, getting them straight <laughs> I had to do it a couple of times because it didn't work out um, there's a slight couple of cracks in the windscreen which I couldn't really do much about other than getting a replacement screen which I couldn't get unless I got a donor model um, but other than that um, it turned out quite nice this one. The stickers are not that great, they're not very sticky. They came out alright, I printed them. They sort of haven't got enough stickiness. Uh, yeah, it was a good one this one. It <coughs> the back goes up if I remember rightly. I can't remember which way. Oh, that's right, you push that forward. And then that tips up. But that's a nice little model. And as I said before, I did drive a TMR to a TM articulated lorry for a time. Many years ago. So that's that one. So thanks to Peter for that one. 
Now, we've got the uh, Corgi Reno Fluoride next, and this one, another one that I made a box for, and I, this one I did a bit of a custom job. Again, I was looking at um, the pictures on on the Google, on the Googlies, and um, I like that the colour that uh, a couple of those pictures brought up on there, and I decided to do it. So that's the colour I did it, and it, it I think it came out really nice. This one, I was pleased with the with the uh, way it came out. Quite a nice little model. Uh, highlighted these vents. The detailing on there, indicators and brake lights with a bit of chrome in the mid, in between the two. So yeah, it came out really nice this one. I was pleased with that. So that was that one. Put him back in the box. And probably I'm putting it more in the box, should be that way. It fits both ways, so. Right, what's next? Ah, uh, well, the next one I did um, is was um, a Code 3 Bedford TK, a Dinky Toys one, which I did for my mate in England for his birthday. So, obviously, I've sent it to him, so I haven't got it anymore. Um, but I'll, I think I've got a couple of photos of it still, so I'll put them on before I show you the next model. But that one turned out quite nice. It was of uh, like a beaver tail, um, what do you say, low loader or beaver tail breakdown truck. Um, and that was modelled on, on my mate's old TK that he used to have when I first met him. Okay, so... Next, <laughs> these ones gave me some aggro. Not so much this red bus, but these are these AEC single deck buses. And um, those are dinky toys, and they got the opening doors. Now, this red one, the doors work fine, um, and I didn't have. Well, I had very little trouble with this one at all when I'm doing it. It's got the bell on there. Yeah, when I was doing it. Um, I think I've got replacement glass, uh, plastic, you know, window units in both of them. But these were made in the factory um, and, and assembled in the factory, the red ones. But this one here, I think it was a kit one. And, um, oh, what a game. I had to put reproduction doors in. Um, you know, I had put them in several times. They kept falling out. Oh, what a nightmare it was. I was glad to finish this one. Um, and they still, that's, that's sort of as far as I can get into clothes. They don't, they're not 100% because they're, they're reproduction doors. So I had to do a lot of sort of fettling and jiggery-pokery to get that to work. But anyway made my own stickers on this one I think these this one I bought the stickers um, but yeah at the end of it um, you know I think they look quite nice but I was glad to finish these I can tell you especially the green one so that was those we're getting through them slowly Right, next, Mercedes-Benz 350 SL Whiz Wheels. Not my favourite kind of wheels at all. Um, I had a couple of people who didn't really like the colour I'd done it. Um, but 
as I said at the time, there's one down the road from here. It's still, it's still there now, gradually rotting away in, the, in someone's yard. Such a shame. Um, but it's this colour, and this this is sort of why I did this one this colour because it was kind of modelled on that one. Um, opening bonnet, opening doors. I put a bit of blue tack to hold that one shut because it kept flying open when it was on the turntable. So both sides, but they seem to spring shut now. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what's happened there over time, they've improved. Um, no, the, boot, the boot didn't open on that one. Um, yeah, I don't like these wheels much at all, but that's how this one was made, so, you know, stick with what's on here at the minute. I have got another one I used as a donor for this one, which I am going to try and do as well, but I'll do it different. So I think these were either white or blue. They they did the models. So that's that one. Rolls well. Right. Now we got this dinky Rolls Royce Phantom 5, and that's a custom restoration. Now somebody put on in my comments on this one there was a Phantom 4. Um, so I don't know, possibly that's right, I don't know. Um, but anyway, this is a dinky one. Um, it's got the steering. And um, I thought it came out really nice. Um, I like that colour. I've again googled some real ones to get these uh, colours. And um, yeah, I think it, it's come out quite a stunning looking model to be honest. I think it really looks nice with that colour. So I was very pleased with that one. Um, I did use one as a donor vehicle to make this one. Um, I took people out of them. But since then, I, well I did say at the time I wanted to do the one I used as a donor model, I did want to do it as well. And um, I just needed some of these parts and <laughs> um, Ian Hulley very kindly sent me a lot of parts for the other one. And um, I think I've almost got enough bits to make up another two now. So I might do another one, you know, in time to come, or another two. Did the back, um, boot opens, but I don't want to scratch it with my nail, if I slip, that's it, boot, put jersey plates on it, uh, GBJ plate, Great Britain jersey, and then I did these wheels I did a little red circle like for the hubcaps very similar to the real ones so yeah that was a nice one that I, like I say was really pleased with the outcome I think I had to get a new bumper and front grille for that one but yeah quite a nice model Okay, so next, um, another donation from Mr. Peter Horton. And this was a matchbox model. And um, it's a 165, a Massey Ferguson 165. And I did do a custom restoration on it. Uh, I tried to make it look more realistic than the actual Matchbox one was with a colour scheme and Peter did send me the decals for it but um, the, the medallions are supposed to be where they are there but the Matchbox decals 
one was at the front and one was at the back. They weren't handed, they just printed the same ones out. You know, there were no left-handed or right-handed ones. So I did these myself because I wanted it to be um, more like the real one. Um, I did the front grill. I had a job with that because it had been melted a bit this side. You can see it's not quite straight, but I sort of filed it and dug it out with a knife and I got it not too, too bad. I drilled out where the headlights go and then I put my own jeweled ones in and then I painted the wheels how the early 165s were. Um, so yeah, um, I didn't do an exhaust, but my excuse is that the exhaust is a downswept one, so it comes out the back, goes underneath. Um, the cab. You can see the sort of cracking in it or according to how the light catches it. Um, that I managed to do was I was cleaning the window unit up like a clown. So anyway, other than that, I was really pleased with the way this one turned out. It looks really nice, I think. Okay. Um, when I did the video with that one, I also did the tour of my shed. So if you want to look back. Um, you'll see the tour of my shed. Okay, next up, we got this. So it's Corgi Toys, Marcos 1800 GT with a Volvo engine. That's number 324, as you can see by the box. Um, another box I made. It's not shutting very well, that one. Or staying shut very well. Um, yeah, this one came out nice as well. Painted that up. Um, I thought there was a dirty mark on there, but it's a bit of a, a chrome thing I put on. Um, yeah, the bonnet lifts up, and I did a bit of engine detailing in there, as you can see, which I thought turned out quite nicely. Um, the doors do open, but mm, I don't want to scratch them. I need a cocktail stick or something to get them open, probably. I don't want to scratch them, but they do open, believe me, they do open. Um, did that detailing on the back. Made the um, roundels with the numbers on. And these the stripes I actually masked off and I painted those in green. They're not stickers. So that came out really nice as well. Nice spoked wheels, so I was very pleased with that one. How are we doing? Oh, there's not that many left now. We're coming, we're coming towards the end. There's a few, but <clears throat> we're coming closer towards the end. Now, the Monte Carlo. When the BMC Mini Cooper S, this is one I had lying about for about a year. Again, I made the box. Um, I was pleased with the way this one turned out. The only thing is, I probably should have put that front number plate further forward, but it still looks quite good. I'm pleased with the way it turned out. Um, The headlights weren't great, they're the originals I took out and put in, but this one here, the metal, you know, sometimes the metal's like a little cup that they're in, it was disintegrating on this side. It is there behind, but it, the edges are disintegrated, I don't know why. This one it didn't. Um, so that's the only thing really with that one that sort of spoils it a bit. Um, I got a new sump guard, a new roof rack, a reproduction roof rack, and um, I had some trouble with this back number. I think in the end I had to make my own because I ruined the, the, the original one that I had. Well, not original, but the reproduction one I had trying to put it on. And um, I can't remember, did I get a, a reproduction glass? I might have done window unit. But that that seem, that doesn't fit properly either. It's, it, 
I couldn't get it to fit properly. Um, it's all right, but it. it I say fit properly. It is right up, but it's like you can just see the, the sort of the seam of the window there. It's almost not up high enough, but it won't go anymore. It's right up against the roof. So whether it's just because it's a reproduction part that it um, it's not quite made right to fit, I don't know. But these decals are sort of vinyl-y ones I bought, and um, they're not bad. It's just that this one, oh, cuckoo, 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 mm. sometimes you feel like strangling the cuckoo. <laughs> yeah, this one, the um, the decal was too big for the, the area it's supposed to go in and the number plates around. <clears throat> and I stuck it on and I should have checked first. So um, that was a bit of a cock up. But it turned out all right in the end, and I was quite, uh, you know, like I say, I was quite pleased. Like Corgi Bob, I've got the um, modern one made in China. Um, I'm not going to show you those because Bob showed all those models. I think he's one one model ahead of me actually on this one, on on these Corgis that made in China. Um, because he's got one that I haven't got yet, which I think is this this one, yeah, this Bentley. So it'd be interesting to compare mine with the other one when it comes. But you know, this one's not far behind the uh, you know the the re well the newer one um, in quality. It's pretty good, so I'm quite pleased with that one. Okay, so what's next? What's next? Um, oh yeah, there's Chrysler Imperial. <clears throat> yeah, I've been after one of these for a long time because I had one as a kid. And, um, alright, the second hand, and I busted it, <laughs> as usual. Like you do, well, like I used to. Um, the doors are not that great on this one. But I had to buy reproduction figures. The bonnet opens, you push down on the wheel. I don't want it. It's very tight and I think it knocks some paint off. I don't want to pull it open it because I'll probably break the paint again. It does open anyway. Um, the doors open. And the boot opens and in the boot you've got the old golf trolley. And um, that's a reproduction golf trolley as well. So that didn't come out too, too bad. Um, suspension, but that's all okay and everything. So it came out quite nice. So that's that one. We're getting closer now to not, not so very long ago. So. Doesn't go that way, go this way. <laughs> okay, so where are we up to? The Chrysler. Ah, ha, ha, now. Hang on a minute, I've got to have a drink of my coffee. I went to work this morning early to do bin emptying. And um, my wife's gone to work this afternoon, so this is why I'm doing this now while she's gone. And hopefully it'll be cleared off her dining room table <laughs> by the time she comes home and I won't get into trouble. Because I got into big trouble when I was doing the, when I was doing my Christmas video. Because I took over the dining room and whoop. Right, so next came uh, these Corgi Combines. Now I did three of these and um, they're like from different eras because the wheels are different so on this one here on this one here it's got metal wheels 
yellow metal wheels. So I think that's the oldest one. I got the reproduction drivers for all three of them. Um, this part here is plastic. Um, so it's a bit too late for the one with the metal wheels. It should have been metal. Like this one here if I push that one back. It should be like this. Metal ones. Um, these are plastic wheels. Well, I think this metal wheels because I knackered the plastic one getting it off, but it's supposed to be plastic wheel. Um, so, this here I kept referring it to as a corn gauge, and um, I was corrected, I think, was it Peter Orton that corrected me on that? Um, and of course, I don't know what I was thinking. I'd seen it somewhere. I think it's when I went for the reproduction parts, and it said about a corn gauge. But of course, it's it's the it's the air cleaner. It's the air cleaner for the actual combine engine. So it's not a corn gauge at all. So the earlier one had this kind of air cleaner metal. If you can see, it's metal. Uh, this later ones, or well, these later ones, had a plastic one, and the top of this was yellow plastic. It was it was part of this air cleaner system. It just pushed through a, a gap. Whereas these ones here, the top of that is metal. Um, it's just like a metal plate. Um, one of them had the metal plate one in, so I had to get a reproduction one. But um, this is the later one. The earlier ones had the tank painted the same colour as the combine. You can see that one. See that there. And um, on the later ones, these this piece here was plastic. On the old, older ones, it was metal. And also the wheels on this one, the later one, are like the you know the later corgi tractors, plastic wheels, different different style altogether. So that's those three. You can't see very well because uh, <laughs> my camera's too close but I don't want to move it because I've got it all sort of rigged up around the chair and tied to this and tied to that. <laughs> so that's these anyway. I made my own decals with them. They're not 100% great, but they're better than nothing and you can't get them, so... Or oh, I couldn't find where to get them. One of these I chipped because I had it in the cabin. It was sliding sliding glass doors and I slid the glass door and it was too close and it banged against it and it chipped it, so I had to touch it up. Okay, so that's those combine harvesters. Now... Next, we're getting right up to date now, you remember, <laughs> this one, you're not going to forget it, and it's still covered in glitter from the Christmas video. So there she is, the old AEC, the old dinky AEC transporter, custom restoration, and um, yeah, it turned out nice, this one. Put jersey number plates on it, Crapo Transport, CT Crapo Transport, and um, yeah, it turned out well in the end. But I was starting to get a bit cheesed off with it, I'll be honest. So that's that one. I hope I'm not boring you too much. Next, we had the old Ford Control. Corgi Jeep, hydraulic platform lift, and I didn't realise, um, it was put in my comments, that um, the gift set had the lamp, the street light, and the person that went in the basket. Uh, the other model, which was just sold as this one is now, is just the basic, I can't remember the number. 
you know, I'll have to look up on my comments. So that's that one. So we're getting really up to date now. Very up to date. And then we got the old Unimog. So you're all going to remember all, all the uh, <laughs> Hasselite putting this one together, trying to remember how it all went. But um, yeah, I made a cock up with a chassis, forgot to paint it orange and I painted it. This back bit, I painted this um, metal colour. But like I say, I was really pleased with the way it turned out because it, it, it does look nice. Yeah, that's covered in glitter as well from my Christmas Christmas video. Um, yeah, I have got the one that I had when I was a kid, so I am going to try and restore that one sometime. But I'll leave it for a little while because, you know, I've done this one now. Or I might just do it, not film it, just do it because you've seen me do this one. So it's silly really doing another one in the video. Okay, so... That's the old snow plough, and then right up to date, the very last one, 2021, was this Warner and Swayze um, mobile crane, and I was really pleased with the way the yellow covered on this one. I I did very light. I did a few coats, but I did very light coats, and. Um, I sprayed the lacquer sort of in the morning. <laughs> lacquer. I sprayed the primer, you know, earlier in the day, and I did my first couple of coats of yellow the same day. And I think it's done better, you know, before the primer it got too hard. Because normally I leave it till the next day, but this one I, I tried not to. So let, let's hope. That over time you don't get like a crazy paving effect. But I was pleased with the way the yellow covered. I was pleased really with the way the whole thing turned out. Um, I nearly did the blue pod again because it came out. It looked so purple in the light. You know the lights in my shed. I went in to look before going to bed. Like you do what I'd done. And um, cheap as I looked at it. And I thought that's flipping purple. That's nothing like the uh, pink. The original the original color anyway the following day I looked at it again thinking oh, I'm gonna respray it do it all again and uh, I thought no it looks really good and unless you've got it next to one this original you just you, you can't tell I mean I'll look at it now and it looks fine it looks the right color it's only if you put an original alongside of it then you'll say oh yeah okay it's a bit more purpley than it is blue um, but no, it's it's fine, it's fine. So anyway, that's uh, that's it really. Um, just one thing I forgot um, in the last video I did mention about um, you know some of my um, donations people donated to me to my channel, and um, this one here is a little. I think it's based on the Ford Fergie. The Ford, certainly the wheels look like Ford Fergie wheels, and that's a Fergie shaped bonnet. It looks to me based on the on a Fergie. So I think the Ford Fergie under swept exhaust, um, steering's missing. But yeah, Mr. Ralph Cooling donated this one to my channel, and uh, I should have mentioned that when I mentioned the other ones in my Christmas video. So. Um, Pete, Mr. Peter Horton sent me the Leyland tractor, so when I do the Leyland tractor, I'll do this one at the same time. So this is another, you know, it's really nice, this one, I'm pleased to have this. So, um, thanks very much, Ralph, for that one, it's much appreciated. And for everybody, uh, me and Harley as well, who's, who's um, donated to my channel, thank you very much. Um, for all the stuff you've sent in 2021, it's all been very much appreciated. And um, the ones that haven't been, you know, restored yet, don't worry, I am going to do them. So, um, 
you know, leading up to Christmas, I wanted to do the ones I'd done solely for my Christmas video. That's the reason I went down the path I did. And, um, yeah, we'll start afresh in the new year. And uh, see how we get on with that. So, thank you very much, everybody, um, for all your support in 2021, all your support right from the beginning when I started this channel and all your encouragement, nice comments and, um, you know, thank you everybody for, like I say, supporting me, my channel, because without you, what's the point in doing it? You know, I get a kick out of doing it, I enjoy doing it, sometimes you get frustrated when things go wrong, don't go according to plan, but I, I have really enjoyed doing you know, so far what I've been doing since I started this channel. And, um, you know, with a head like a sieve, like I've got not a good memory at all, I find it's nice to look back on some of my earlier videos and watch them. I do watch them quite a bit, um, you know, because I forget. I forget what I've done and I forget how I've done it. And, and you know, it, it's good to, to watch them. It's good to look back. And it's nice to see other people's videos as well, because I've learned a lot of, you know, everybody. You know, I don't watch as many videos of other people's as I would like. I just simply haven't got the time. When I have got spare time, I'm trying to get some models restored myself. Um, so, you know, I get to work in the morning. Sometimes I go an hour, I get there an hour earlier before we start. In the summer there, we start at six. So I sort of get up at four, I go to work. And... Uh, get there around five and then I have an hour just going through you know the videos and that and um, that's that's the way I do it if I put a video on I, I answer my comments in the car park at work before starting work as much as I can and um, you know if I leave it till the night to watch videos I usually end up falling asleep in the chair or if I'm watching them on my phone in, in bed with my earphones on not to disturb my missus too much I end up falling asleep and <laughs> I wake up and the video's finished and I think damn I've got to do it again I've got to watch it again because I've forgotten you know it's gone off halfway through or I've fallen asleep halfway through so I've missed most of it <laughs> that's what happens with me I'm afraid but I do try to watch as many as I can so yeah thank you very much everybody for um, all your support throughout the year Okay, so um, all that remains for me to do now, well me and Monica, is this. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year! Have a safe 2022. Cheers! Cheers.